now we have the task of trying to figure out how to write a free particle wave function that is actually normalizable. So the problem with these wave functions, the way that we've written them, um, is that we actually know completely and fully what the momentum is. So we have one value of k that um, describes our particle. That means that we have one value of the momentum because p equals h bar k, and so we know exactly, exactly what our momentum is. And if we know the momentum exactly, so we know p plus or minus nothing, then our uncertainty in the momentum is zero. And if our uncertainty in the momentum is equal to zero, and we know that the mo uncertainty momentum times the uncertainty in the position has to be greater than or equal to h bar over two, that means that our uncertainty in our position has to go to infinity. So we have no idea where the particle is if we completely specify what the momentum is. And if you look at what that wave function looks like as a stationary state, a standing wave, you can see that um, it has probability all the way along um, a, a finite probability. So if I square this, a finite probability all the way along the x-axis. It can be anywhere on the x-axis. And so I have no idea where that particle is, but I know exactly how fast it's going. So we can fix this up if what we do is we write a superposition of our wave function, our, our basis set, right? So remember our basis set is um, e to the minus i k x and e to the i k x. And so if we write a superposition um, of a bunch of these, but with different values of the momentum, so we add up a bunch of different momentum, um, then what we're going to end up with is what's called a wave packet. So if we express our wave function as a sum over um, k to k plus dk, some, some um, uncertainty in the wave vector, which gives me an uncertainty in the momentum, then um, so we can have our wave function, um, but with different values of the wave vector. Then um, it turns out that when we do this, we get a function which localizes itself a bit onto the x-axis. So the more momentum vectors, the more wave vectors that we add into our superposition, the more certain we will be about our position, the more it will localize on the x-axis because the less we will know about that momentum because now we have a spread of, of wave vectors or a spread of momentum that are describing our particle. So to visualize what that looks like, um, we can use this little applet that you can find on the web at the address that you see up here. Um, and what we've done here is we have uh, created a wave packet with our initial wave vector equal to 50. And we've added in, so this A factor is the number of um, different, the spread in wave vectors that we've used. So we've used the spread in wave, wave vectors. And you can see that when we add up all of those um, traveling waves, that we get this little packet that's localized on the x-axis. And, it's, and this just keeps looping, so it's traveling, in this case, in the plus x direction, right? And so um, what happens when I try to integrate this is I get the area under, well, first I have to square it, and then I get the area underneath this curve, and you can see that it no longer spreads out over the entire x-axis, and so it's going to go to zero at some point. Um, and, and so I'm going to be able to get a finite area underneath this. Magnitude squared, right, you can see 
that this is the probability of finding the particle in a given region in space, and that is a finite area, a finite region. And so now I can normalize my, um, my wave function. So typically when we're talking about free particles, we don't think of them as having one specific speed, but rather having a range of speeds or a range of momentum. And when we add up all of those range of momentum, all of those different wavelengths for our um, wave function, we end up with this packet, this little bundle of waves that is localized on the x-axis.